the martial arts is full of mysteries and discoveries throughout our training. Many of those come in the form of certain philosophies or psychological principles about how to train and what we want to achieve. We're going to talk about the psychology of martial arts today on Black Belt Life. Hi everyone, welcome to Black Belt Life. I'm Darren Myers and I want to thank you for watching today. Please let me know what you think of today's topic in the comments below. And remember, subscribe, okay? Please subscribe to the channel to help us grow and to help get the word out there about what we're trying to do here. So today we are talking about Budo psychology and philosophy. This is going to be a several part series as we discuss the different psychological concepts of the martial arts. You hear or you say as, you're, as a sensei lots of things to educate and motivate your students in classes, of course. Some of the more modern phrases might, might be things like, wear a black belt school or have a black belt attitude or like our motto, no whining, no complaining, nothing negative, no matter how tough it gets. <laughs> Something a little calmer might be like our ethics. Karate begins and ends with respect. We are responsible for our behavior. Actions have consequences, and there is no excuse for bad manners, and we lead by example. All of these are great philosophies to live our lives by. Some of the more traditional Japanese phrases you may be familiar with are things like seven times down, eight times up mind like water, mind like the moon, or even mind of no mind. So the psychology of martial arts, or what is called Budo no Shinrigaku, is so intertwined in the teaching of traditional, in a traditional dojo that it's almost impossible to instruct without it. Classes that are missing these principles are simply gems that teach techniques. Budo psychology is the cognitive, attitudinal, and behavioral principles that underlie the martial arts. I was very fortunate to be a student under some great instructors, all of which taught and really kind of explained a little bit about these philosophies. Most of all, Soki Shogo Kuniba was one of the most instrumental in showing me how these principles apply not just to martial arts training, but to everyday life. And he couldn't necessarily explain that because his, his English was not that great, but it was the way he lived his life that showed me how these principles work. And most of the kanji, by the way, in, in today's presentation was done by Soki Shogo Kuniba. I also want to thank and pay my deep respects to a man who has had more of an effect on my life and training than he may ever realize. Dr. James Herndon Hanshi first introduced me to Soki Shogo Kuniba in 1980. Although I was never his direct student, Hanshi Herndon showed me the importance of learning and documenting the history of the arts and your teachers and your lineage. He showed me how important it was to understand the Japanese language and to be able to recognize and write some of the kanji and how they relate uh, to the, the karate and help uh, you discover or have a deeper understanding of the arts and becoming a better sensei. He's a very intelligent man with two, pa not one, but two, two PhDs in psychology and could explain this much better than I could. But much of the information from today's and the following videos come from his teachings, writings, and presentations. The, so thank you, Hanchi Herndon. And we'll put uh, some of those uh, writings at all in, in the comments below. Budo psychology has its foundation in Japanese cultural and spiritual traditions along with other Asian influences. And this is not something that those people have to learn. It is part of their daily lives. It's part of their culture. We, on the other hand, have to learn all about it. We learn about the mind, the body, the spirit, and how they're all supposed to work together. It's totally foreign to us. Uh, take, for instance, Asian medicine versus Western medicine. It was all based on this concept of chi, this internal force, which you could not cut a body open and see it. 
And so Western medicine said, it doesn't exist, we can't see it. Now they're understanding that the Asian medicine tries to treat the entire body, not just the particular disease or organ that is, uh, that is affected. And they're understanding that this stuff actually works. Imagine that, it's been around for thousands of years. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the heart of things, which leads us to the heart. All psychology begins with kokoro. And the kanji there, by the way, uh, is by Soki Kuniba. Now, in Japanese, there are three words for heart. Shinzo, which refers to the physical organ. Then you have hato, which in English would kind of be the word for a love heart. And then you have kokoro, or shin, which it can also be pronounced when combined with other kanji, which means, okay, um, uh, that's going to be hard to explain. <laughs> Kokoro is well understood in the Japanese culture and the Asian culture, but it's really difficult to explain in English. The kanji for kokoro, as you see here, actually depicts the shape of the heart, the actual human organ that is essential for life. Now, the Chinese thought the heart was where psychological functions originated from and the source of all activities. Now, kokoro, which also implies the mind in the emotional sense, spirit, courage, determination, our feelings, love, the inner meaning of the soul, just as we say in English, the heart of things. Let's get to the, the heart of things. Sometimes in training, we say things like, you know, put your heart into it or give it some spirit. Well, we're talking about kokoro. What are some of the motivational sayings you use in your dojo? Uh, hey, put them in the comments. I would love to see them and I, I might steal some of them too. So uh, please put them in the comments below. Think about kokoro. Conceptually, kokoro unites the notions of heart, mind, and spirit or soul, okay? It sees these three elements as being indivisible from one another. Kokoro denotes one's intellectual responses, or in other situations, implies one's emotional reactions. If we say, she has a good heart, it means heart and spirit and soul and mind all together. We're not just saying she, her heart beats well and it's healthy. We're talking about her being. Kokoro then has three basic meanings. The heart and its functions, the mind and its functions, and our center or our essence. We have to understand that kokoro is a much richer concept than the Western word psychology. One of the problems of discussing kokoro in English is that by linking words, heart and mind and spirit with that and, we imply that there are divisions that simply don't exist in Japanese. Interesting, but in this Eastern culture, the three aren't intrinsically linked as one, they are one. Wow, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? So we're trying to get that mind, body, and spirit together. It, it is together, it is one. And that's where we as, as uh, non-Asians have a hard time with it. So if they truly are one, why do we have to train so hard to make the mind, body, and spirit as one as we're always told in class? They already are one. But all the parts that make the one need refining. They need perfecting. The body must be honed like the edge of a sword. The mind sharpened and focused like a steel trap. And the spirit forged into an indomitable force. It's only through training, only through that physical uh, hardship that we become more aware of the presence of Kokoro and how we must develop it to become a true warrior. Kokoro, uh, Shing, heart, mind, usually refers to the entire network of interdependent beginnings in which we are born, we live, and we die and to which we awaken through our practice. So we'll talk more about Kokoro and about the other concepts of Budo psychology on the next Black Belt Life. And remember, hit that subscribe button 
and hit the like as well. Let us know you liked it. And please hit the notifications bell so that you'll get notified of every video we put out. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week on Black Belt Life.